I'm going to start by asking you, who watches football? Who remembers the great World Cup in 2010? The finalist was a Spanish team. The finalist was a team that had the people, had the processes, had the systems, and had everything it takes to, world, to win a World Cup. And in July 18th, 2010, what they did is they went to the World Cup final against Netherlands, and the Netherlands lost the Spanish one. And they won because of the way they played. And they took the world by a storm. Four years from now, four years afterwards, 2014, what happened? They didn't even reach the final 16. They were beaten. They were beaten by the Chileans, a team unheard of. A team that no one even thought they would be able playing an aggressive team in the World Cup. It's the same team that won in 2010. They couldn't reach the 16 in 2014. Why is that? They had the same people. They were playing the same game, one, two. They had the same processes. They had everything the same. But what they had to fail to understand that between 2010, fast forward to 2014, everything changed. The game became much faster. Even the ball changed. The players had a different system of playing. So when they brought in their way of 2010, their way that made them win 2010, they didn't were able, sorry, they weren't even able to play in 2014. They were out. Now I want to ask you a question. Who was a manager or who was working in 2010? Today we are not in 2010. Today we're going to 2014, 2018. And the big issue that we've got right now is our industry is transforming quite dramatically. Customers are going to the web to research us. Our competitors even know where our customers are that there is a customer looking at a Nissan or an Infiniti or Renault car in Priada and they will target him on his phone or in her phone. So the game has changed dramatically. That requires that we change our processes, our systems. And that's what we're doing. Just to give you an idea, we're investing 4 million dirhams this year alone in revamping our system. And this is the first step. We're redesigning our processes. We are moving into the digital age, but that doesn't mean anything unless we, as individuals, change the way we operate completely. And if we keep on operating the same way we operated in 2016, 17, 14, 13, 12, we will be the Spanish team that got beaten, and we can't afford to do that. So the first thing we need to do is to change our processes, which we are under right now. Second thing is change our IT system, which we are doing. Restructure ourselves. But all that doesn't mean a thing unless we change the way we do business. From the minute we wake up in the morning to the time we go back home, the way we operate has to be different. Having said that, this is why we're here today. This year is the year of transformation. And we're going to help you with that. How? First of all, we're going to have these sessions on a regular basis. So twice to three times a month, we're going to pull on our business partners. We work with the likes of Oracle, we work with the likes of Facebook, we work with Google. We've got the best partners in the business to work with. So we thought, why don't we get these business partners and two to three times in a month, they come in and talk to us about something that is relevant to our business. And we need to sit down there, understand it, go research it, and develop our knowledge. We're going to be offering you training this year on digital transformation. If I look at the amount of training you've engaged in last year, it's quite scary. So it requires that you take that extra step and start engaging more. Because we don't want you to be PK who won the World Cup and captain the team in 2010, come in and lose the game four years afterwards. You can't be that person. And the only person who can make the change is you. So at AAC, we're going to give you the opportunity to change. You need to grab it and move ahead because we can't do it for you. 
I'm not going to go on long. This is my message. If we and you and I don't change the way we do business today, we're going to be in big trouble tomorrow. And tomorrow is 2018, which we're in right now. So today I'm going to open the first event where we're going to get the guest speaker. Mm -hmm. Soon you're going to be getting from me invitations to training. Please read them. Whatever doesn't make sense, engage in it. Whatever terminology today which is said that doesn't make sense, don't go on your phone and start browsing because you're not interested. Write it down and go research it. It's the things that you don't understand are the things that you need to focus on because that's what training is all about. I want to thank you all for coming. I want to thank Madame Huda for being with us. We need to move forward, so take as much as possible from these sessions. They're made for you, they're made for you to improve. Welcome, Mr. Christian Fariello. Good morning. Uh, have you got your uh, double, triple, quadruple espresso this morning? Because you're going to need it. We start with pizza. Why is that? Because everyone likes it, right? And because it's made in Italy. Who say it's from Egypt? Ah, all right. Good. Now, do you remember this slogan, power is nothing without control? You are all from the automotive, so you should remember it, right? If you don't remember, do you remember this slogan? This is like 20 years old slogan. It was the most impactful advertising and one of the top 100 advertising in the history of advertising. And this was done by Pirelli, the Italian tire manufacturer. Now, way before Facebook, way before Instagram, way before Google, way before internet, how can Pirelli sell more tires? Tires has been always a commodity. We all sell cars. Nobody thought to sell tires. Tire, it's, a, it's what you need. It's a commodity. It's not a big deal. But Pirelli was the first that realized, let's make something special. Let's make our customer craving to buy tires. Pirelli is a 150 years old company. So imagine what do they need to do to convince people that a tire is not the same as another tire. With impactful advertising, best creative in the world, etc., etc., they make sure that the message stands out. And still now, power is not without control, is still the slogan of Pirelli. So you buy a, a Ferrari, a Lamborghini, or a supercar, but never thought about spending money on tires until Pirelli came on board. After I realized that, I came out with my own tagline, which is, marketing is nothing without digital. You can quote me, or you can take a picture. <laughs> Only if you share it. Otherwise, don't take a picture, right? Now, Gardner, one of the leading uh, trending uh, company in the world, came out with the top 10 uh, digital trends for 2018. If you would have get from Gardner this morning, you could have stayed at home. But because you are here today, I cherry picked for me the top five that make sense for your industry, for the automotive. Digital trends, especially that you need to be afraid. Because these are not just the things that, oh, Facebook is the next thing, so Instagram is the next thing. There are many digital, digital trends that you should be afraid, no matter what position you are covering in your company. Every employee should be afraid, genuinely afraid, of many digital trends. The first one, the biggest for me, is artificial intelligence. It's not something old, it's not something new, it's something that has been around for two decades. Actually, I won a competition from Microsoft developing artificial intelligence, and that was in 2003. So it's something very, very, very old. But we're not scared about the Terminator, that's the machine when they are going to take over. But we need to be afraid that machines are going to do our job. This is not the first time. In the Industrial Revolution, machines start doing the job of laborers, of people. In the Agricultural Revolution, machines start doing the job of men in the fields. Now, computers and artificial intelligence are doing the job of any employee. What's the second scary digital trend? Intelligent apps and analytics. Now, it's become so key for any organization to analyze data. But sometimes the data are so vast, are so complicated, that even men alone cannot do it. And now there are apps or artificial intelligence that pre-analyze the data. And it tells us what we need to do. Third trend, IoT. Who knows what is what IoT means? Very good. Who doesn't know what IoT means? 
Who is still thinking about pizza and doesn't care about IoT or whatever it is? <laughs> Fair enough, I like your honesty. <laughs> Very good. IoT means Internet of Things, which nowadays, so many devices are connected online. I'm not talking about the mobile phone. I'm talking about smart watches and many more. The soon, I mean, they're already available on the market, dishwasher, wash machine, fridge, are connected online, and they tell us when the milk is expired or you need to order more meat or some vegetable has to be eaten today, otherwise you throw it away. Device is all connected online. This was still something of a couple of years ago. This was the trend of a couple of years ago that the big corporate used to push. Now, in your industry, the new things is the AOT, the automotive of things. Now, cars, new cars are getting connected online and send information to the headquarters, to how the car perform, even where are you, where you are stuck in traffic, what are the challenges that you as a driver are facing every day, every moment, what kind of button you push. So the, the car manufacturer understand more about their customer and they can eventually build a better car or do a better advertising for the car owners. That's kidding because now technology is doing more and more and more your job. What else? Digital twins. This is a crazy, crazy, crazy concept where actually by building simulations of real life objects, company figure out what can happen if cargo shipping company, they build simulation of their ships to figure out how long does it take to deliver the goods, let's say from China to the, the to Jebel Ali port, which route to take, what are the risks that the sea is going to make the, the shipping uh, sink. This is applied also to company. Now there are simulations that simulate company. I remember when I was a teenager that there was a game for the computer, it was called Startup Simulator, where actually you look like the manager of a startup company and your computer, you plan and launch product and stuff like this. What kind of nice game. Now this is going to the next level with the supercomputing power that there is available today. So companies are simulating situations, markets, even, uh, even catastrophe. Based on that, you can figure out what may possibly happen. When I work in Oracle five years, we were forecasting everything, everything, everything. Every day we had a daily forecast, weekly forecast, monthly forecast, three months, quarter forecast, half year and yearly forecast. Every single day. And imagine that with 55,000 employees, how can Larry Ellis on the chairman figure out what was the forecast? Simply by having all of the data in a system. So this is how effective company operates. And based on the forecast, we were cutting employee or we went hiring new. If the sales are going to drop, before they drop, already employee chop, 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 chop. Marketing cost, chop, chop, chop. Three months in advance. So then we keep the profit. When the market pick up again, we still have the profit, rehire more people, respend more in marketing, and we keep going. That's how Oracle keep an average of 20 to 30% profit every year for the last 20 years, unchanged. What's an interesting topic? Conversational platforms. Conversational platforms start long time ago with the simple website chat. You're on a website and there is the chat where you ask your things. You don't need to call. You just simply ask. You simply chat. Now, this is going to the next level. The next level is that machines are chatting on behalf of humans. Still artificial intelligence, still chatbot. There are systems that you chit chat and it's a computer. So customer service people are not going to be redundant, but are going to need to update to the new digital era. And voice. Have you heard about uh, Alexa? Now there is Alexa, there is Google Home, uh, there are so many different devices, a part of Siri from uh, Apple that you've seen it many times. But now there are devices at home that you talk, you ask, and they reply back. So this is the new things. Before you need to ask people, then you need to ask Google. Now you simply speak and the device answer. So if I ask the device, what is the cheapest car uh, to buy for me? Eventually, the device is going to say the car that you are selling or the car of your competitor are selling. It's not only anymore about the computer or the mobile, it's also about the voice.
when I ask what is the, the car that takes less petrol or the, the, cost of, the lowest cost of maintenance, the device will speak. We cannot lie. We cannot claim that our car is the best. And we all have seen what's happened with Volkswagen that they claim that it was a clean diesel. And after a few years, it turned out it was one of the dirtiest diesel ever produced. So we cannot lie. What's next? Blockchain. What is this? Who has heard about blockchain? At least the name blockchain? Good. Now, who can tell me what are those two images here? Very good. And what is this? Who doesn't know what is this? This is called, who doesn't know what is this? OK, everyone knows Bitcoin, right? This is the symbol of Ethereum. It's the second biggest cryptocurrency in the world. And actually, it's getting faster and faster closer to Bitcoin. Now, cryptocurrency, for those of you that think that there is only Bitcoin, there are several thousands already. And every day, there are a new coin, every single day. But we all know Bitcoin because it's the oldest, it's the biggest, etc., etc. This is the second largest. Cryptocurrency is one of the applications of the blockchain. Now, what has to do with us, with automotive? Let's see what are the applications for blockchain in automotive, how the future is going to use blockchain in your industry. First, automotive of things interactions. The IoT or the AOT, it requires a massive amount of security. And at the moment, the best possible security is offered by blockchain systems. The same Dubai government is going to use blockchain to secure all of the documentation and the paperwork in the country. So imagine all of the admin people that are working with documents every day, they're going to disappear because the documents are going to disappear. So it's not a question of what I need to do. It's about when. Second application, auto financing. Now, more and more and more is distributing across the globe the possibility to finance your car, not with a standard bank and standard loan, but thanks to blockchain with cryptocurrency. I can finance your car without even knowing you, without even meeting you, simply because I subscribe to a system. This system allows you to choose where to get the money from. You get your car. You don't care who is Christian Farioli. And I don't care who is you. Simply, I care that at the end of the month, you pay and I get a percentage. So basically, you skip the banking system. You skip the entire financing system straight away to the core. Scaling, right? What's the next? Automotive title transfer. As the properties in Dubai very soon are going to be transferred with the blockchain, even the car title deeds. The car titles are going to be transferred through blockchain, which means that with certain absolute, nobody can fake titles or cheat or be who is not. And everyone is going to be able to retrieve who is the real car owner, no matter what you do, no matter if you bribe ministry, officials, police, anyone in the planet, the car titles are going to be absolutely registered to one single person. And you will know also the real history of a car. I can tell you, I just used the car, uh, only my wife used the car only one year. And maybe there are 20 owners before, right? So with blockchain, that's never going to be possible. So we're going towards the total, total, total transparency. Fourth, insurance claim processing. Even insurances are planning to use blockchain to make sure that every claim is going to be 100% registered. And again, Everyone is going to have a full, perfect history. Nobody's going to say, yeah, I never got any accidents, and you have a history of 50 accidents per year, because it's all going to be recorded in the blockchain. Supply chain management, even parts suppliers are going to use blockchain to make sure that every part has a perfect number, date, expiry, where do they come from, etc., etc. And it's not going to be possible to fake anything. Loyalty-based microtransactions. To your existing customers, you can give coin, crypto, tokens, appreciation for being loyal to you, not just in money. Because in monetary, if you give few dirham to a car owner, 
it's not going to care. But if you give some token, some coin, some lo it's a kind of loyalty program, but with a real monetary value, that's how customers feel good and start loving your brand more and more and more. You think it's too complicated? You start thinking, wow, what's going on here? I thought that this was going to be much easier. But the digital future is never easy for anyone, no matter if you are in marketing or not, if you are in admin, if you are in finance, if you are in uh, operations, or if you are in sales. Life is not easy. So what's the solution? This time it's not pizza. Raising your digital IQ. Now it's official, even His Highness Sheikh Mohammed mentioned that the future of UAE is going to be more and more and more digital savvy. And there is officially worldwide the idea of the digital IQ. Now, you know that there is the normal IQ, right? You do a test and they tell you how smart you are. But this test is very outdated because it doesn't take into consideration a lot of things which has been invented after the invention of the IQ. That's why now there is also the emotional intelligence quotient, which is how you maintain, how you build and maintain a relationship with others, how you analyze your emotion, how you understand the emotion of a third party. Let's say a salesperson, even that never got a degree, he can sell crazy simply because he got emotional intelligence. He has empathy for his clients. And what is digital IQ? Digital IQ is how savvy you are to use digital technology. And this is something that unfortunately is changing every month or every year. Even if you are the savviest person in digital right now, in 10 years from now, you're going to be useless. I study IT engineering and I finished my degree in 2001. Now I can take 99.9% .9 of my degree and throw to the bin. That's the truth, a real fact. Then I had to study marketing and apply digital to marketing. But still, even marketing is never going to be enough. Even if you finish the best master in marketing, what do you know about digital? Zip. How do I know that? Because many students of my trainings come from the best master in marketing. So you need to continue learning and you need to crave for understanding what's going on, what's going to be the next things. So after today, you're going to be amongst the very few people in UAE with a bigger vision about the digital future. And I'm sure that is going to help you a lot. And let's see now four of the most disruptive trends that will transform the auto industry. First, driven by sheer mobility, connected services. The Uber, the Karim, and the carpooling app. So people are going to buy more and more car for carpooling, for Uber, for Karim. And we're talking about big numbers. This is, you know that Uber is the biggest car company, that is the biggest taxi company that doesn't own cars. And the biggest taxi company that doesn't own cars is going to buy more cars. Either one of yours or one of your competitors. <coughs> Second disruption. City type and area type will replace country. When we target geography, we typically target country. And we target UAE to sell more cars. And we target our campaign in UAE. Now it's not anymore about UAE. It's not anymore about Dubai, Sharjah, Ajman, or Abu Dhabi. It's about little area. People that they live in Marina, they have a different mindset and lifestyle compared to people that live in downtown. And has a different mindset with people that live uh, in Deira. A different mindset than people that live in international city. These are the new geo-targeting. Not anymore, Dubai. Dubai is a big city, full of different areas with so many different people. And this is how we are going to, the micro-targeting. Number three, once technology and regulatory issues are resolved, up to 15% of new cars in 2030 could be fully autonomous, which means that they will drive themselves. If you're a driver, eventually you're going to be redundant sooner or later when the car will drive themselves. We know that Google Cars has been driven more than 1 million miles already. Self-driven car. More than 1 million miles without passenger. Sorry, without driver. 
maybe even with a passenger, I don't know, they go around alone. But that's the idea, that by 2030, if the regulatory are going to allow it, 15% of the cars sold are going to be driverless. Possibly. Yeah. Then, number four, electric vehicle are going to continue. Now, we have seen the last, uh, automot the last uh, auto show in, uh, in Dubai. That was a pleasantly, surprisingly full, 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 full of electric car, ready to be sold in 2018. From 2018 to 2020, every major manufacturer is going to have electric car. If we like it or not, if we think that is good or not, doesn't matter what we think. It's what the customer think that matter. And by fact, there's going to be more and more and more electric vehicles. Now, you don't start selling electric vehicles in one day. Even our beloved Elon Musk, he didn't start selling Tesla in one day. He started putting the idea in the mind of people and even against all of the petrol companies and the petrol engine manufacturer, etc., etc., he achieved to convince people to buy electric cars. It took several years until finally succeed. So if we want to sell electric car tomorrow, we need to start today, putting in the mind, the mind of people. You can see from uh, Dubai tourism, you can see from Dubai, the idea to having flying taxi. It's not just an idea to get flying taxi. It's a perfect PR and marketing tool to show off how Dubai is looking for the future. Even if you're never gonna drive, uh, if you're never gonna fly on a flight taxi. But then you know that Dubai is the city that go for the future. That's why if tomorrow there are plans in your manufacturer to sell electric car, you need to start today to put seeds in the mind of your customer. Because even if they don't buy electric, they buy one of your normal car because they have the dream that you are looking at the future. Right? The best successful online brand is not in the automotive but is in the advertising and marketing. A company which has been launched in the worst moment when there was the biggest crisis, the last one. So at the end of 2008, biggest crisis. In the crisis, everyone cut marketing and advertising costs. This company launched with 225 employees. The company has been featured everywhere. Everyone knows the company. Who can be this company? Groupon. You know it, right? Now, Groupon now has 10,000 employees in 45 countries and yearly revenue $2.8 billion. He had an average of 22,000% increase per year for the first five years. The biggest growing and fastest company in the history of the world. And they only exclusively care about digital from the first day to today. Only exclusively digital. Nothing else but digital. So. If they are doing it so successful, eventually it makes sense to put a little bit of brain into it. So how can we embed what's called today the digital transformation? You're not going to become a machine. You're not going to become a Terminator. Don't worry. Digital transformation happens with starting with frontline workers. This is not a marketing job. Digital transformation happens with every single employee, starting with the frontline workers, the person that which are directly in contact with the customer. They are the first that should embed the digital transformation. <coughs> How to activate your digital growth engine? Of course, you have to learn and you need to understand more and more about the digital IQ. You need to increase your digital IQ. It's not just about, oh yeah, I have Facebook. So what? Eight years ago, at conferences, I used to ask, is your company using Facebook for business? And the answer was, Facebook is bad. It's for kids. My brand is serious. I'm never going to be online. Now, how can I get a little bit more like because I get less? Now it's too late. Facebook is not for a millennial anymore. It's for elderly people. It's the truth. Once the parents go in Facebook, the kids leave. <laughs> right? Where are the kids? In Snapchat. So as soon as you start using Snapchat, they will leave to something else. Right? But if your target elderly people, Facebook is perfect. How? Diagnose your company. You don't need to be a marketer or an analyst to diagnose your company digitally. You need to be 
understanding and figuring out within your organization, your line of business, even if you are an admin and finance and operation or whatever, or a customer support, a customer service, how all of your structure is using digital. Conduct a digital strategy workshop, even with cross people from different departments. This has been done all life in every industry, not talking about digital, talking about processes. Toyota has been mastering this process since the beginning. All of the Toyota parts, Toyota cars are on huge panels where every, every, every Toyota employee can go and see every single part. Even if I'm an admin and I see that, can you do the, the exhaust a little bit more bendy because I think that is work better. They will evaluate and if it's good, they take into production and the employee got a reward. No matter that, but he's not an engineer. What do you know about exhaust? But he's a user, he's a customer. And if you think that the exhaust can be better like that, and the engineers then they prove that he was right, he gets a reward. So digital transformation starts from everyone, not only by the digital savvy people. Start a digital dialogue. Use technology, video, internal social media, mobile to engage a large number of employees about the digital. How many total, total employees there are uh, in, uh, in the organization? Approximately 3,000 plus. That's a massive workforce that can be put at the service of digital growing. Develop a disruption strategy. Look for customers who are not served by your current offering. Expand your ecosystem, even from places that you're not thinking about, like incubators, university, labs, open source projects. Just to be there, just to be there. As you see, the flying taxi. Just what has to do Dubai with flying taxi? It's cool. Just because it's cool, Dubai needs to be in the coolest things in the planet. That's it. Shake up your leadership. Doesn't mean to change your leadership. It means shake up your leadership. Challenge your leaders with digital to figure out if the digital strategy can be adjusted or the traditional processes can be eventually adjusted, implemented, or improved thanks to digital. The best digital transformers are, again, the frontline employee because they're the one talking with customer every single moment. I was in real estate many years ago in the boom and all of the sales agents start feeling useless because customers start knowing more about projects and property than the salesperson itself. People used to go to the sales agent and say, I want to get a villa in Springs type 3E, uh, but it should face uh, the park and not the street. And I'm looking at the price of 1.2 to 1.3 million dirham. The sales agent start thinking, I don't even know so many things. Why do they need me? The only reason that they need him is because they need a key to open the apartment to see the apartment, <laughs> right? And many agencies call themselves key door opener. What's your job? Opening door. <laughs> and then I don't speak with the client because if I start speaking, they ask me questions, I don't know what to answer. <laughs> I just open door, and then close it. Sometimes they were selling, right? So with digital, you save money, big time, but not only. You engage, that is the real reason why every company is heavily transforming into digital. What does it mean engage? This is the pyramid of the quality of engagement. At the bottom, there is the awareness. We need to make sure that everyone knows about our brand, our product, our services, that's fine. That's a typical advertising strategy or typical digital strategy. Then audience engagement is not anymore about, this is my product, buy the product, 20% discount. Buy, buy now. I give you 25% discount, buy now. Okay, 26%. Engage, like, guys, do you like this? How much are you happy to pay? What do you like the most? What you don't like? And then I repackage it and I put it there exactly as you like. That's part of the engagement process. But it's not finished. Of course, there is a conversion phase where people are purchasing the product. But after people purchase, it's not finished because yeah, we know that, yeah, but he buy a car and for five years at least he's never gonna buy any more cars. So we don't need to spend time with him. Wrong. Because in those five years, 
he can recommend you his friend, his brother, his relative, his wife, his friends, thanks to the audience advocacy. What I told you before about uh, iPhone. We are Apple advocates because we love the product so much. And when somebody tells you, I'm thinking to buy the new Samsung, no way, no way, no way. iPhone 10 or nothing, right? If you buy the Samsung, I will unfriend you in Facebook. <laughs> I've heard this conversation. So audience advocacy is how you elevate your customer to the next level. Of course, sometimes you do the test track, uh, invite your customer because there is a new car coming, but in your mind there is always, I invite you customer because I want to try to sell you more car. That's not audience advocacy. Okay, Apple sometimes is doing not the clean way. They make your Apple, your iPhone, slowing down by updating the system, is slowing down, so you will feel more need to change for the new one, which is super fast. I mean, you cannot slow down the car of your customer, so then you can sell a brand new car. <laughs> That's not gonna be nice, right? But audience advocacy is bottom line what every single employee should aim at. And the best advocates should be your employee, your employee first. You need to like your, com your company so much, your product so much, that you are happy and eager to refer friends and customers to your company because it's good, not because you take an incentive. I know because you want to try to sell me your company car because you get the bonus, you get a holiday. No, because generally you really like the car so much that for you exists only that car. In the digital era, there are big news, shocking news, and silent. In silent, nobody wins. And the traditional messaging communication style that used to be good in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 2000, 2010, now doesn't work anymore. My kids know how to skip advertising when he recognize that is advertising. Mobiley, it's a company that's figured out that you need to create content, not advertising. That's the way. Now, another digital trend, the CDO will become part of the board. Who has ever heard the word the CDO? Who has never heard about the word the CDO? Who still think about pizza again? <laughs> All right, I like, I, I like the honesty. Now, the CDO means Chief of Digital Officer. Who is this? It's a new figure, it's a new position that has been created two years ago. I was the presenter of Bloomberg Business Week event about rise of the CDO two years ago. Then big corporates start hiring a CDO. Now, the bad fact is that it's a brand, 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 brand new position which doesn't exist before. It doesn't come from anywhere. So there are no CDO available in the market. Do hire a CDO from Spain, from the top, top telco company, Telefonica, one year ago, six months later, they fired him because even he was not able to integrate with the existing organization. Now, organization should be also open to accept the CDO. Does need to be seen as the outsider, which is going to come to the company and tell me to start posting my face in, in Facebook every day and I don't like it. So I say that the CDO is useless and we kick him out. Somebody that should be conversates at the level of the board, because the CDO, it's a board position. The CEO set the direction for the transformation. The CFO provide the capital and measure the ROI. The CFO is not gonna pay for money like this uh, and then uh, not waiting for a return. So obviously it's the job of the CFO to measure the ROI. The CMO set the voice for the customers. The CMO is the guy that knows as much as possible the brand personality and the customer perception about our brand. The HR lead the cultural change, lead the transformation, and the CEO embed the digital change. You cannot change a company in one day. You plan where you're going now, where you wanna go in one year time, and then you set the intermediate steps with KPI to measure how close you are transforming towards digital. 
And this means that we are all going to be back to school. Now, doesn't mean that these guys, they need to learn a social media, social network, absolutely not. They just need to understand the few key pills that's going to be good for them to interact with the CDO. Because you can tell me, as a manager, as a senior, senior manager, we want to push this car this year. Because we have three cars to choose, and out of the three, we push this one. Because we believe that it's going to be the best. This is the standard approach. Because the research told us that. Now, as a CDO, I can tell you that right now, there are a lot of people searching for a cheap and affordable car. And there is nobody searching for a, a medium range car. So based on that, you should start thinking, does it make sense that we push that car? Or maybe it's better that we keep pushing the other one. Because this is what your customers are asking digitally, every minute, every day, specifically, in, not even in Dubai, in international, international city, in downtown, in Dubai Marina, in Palm Jumeirah. So these are the customers that are looking for this. So why do we want to push a different product? We're never going to be so successful as if we push the right product. And this information comes from the CDO. So the CDO is somebody with strong technical skills, marketing skills, and analytical skills, which typically doesn't exist, right? But this is where we are going. Now, Google call their employee smart creatives. What does it mean? That everyone should also be an IT engineer, even lawyers need to also be, have a second degree in IT engineering. Finance people should also have a degree in IT engineering. This is according to Google, because they get the kind of problem solving. It's the same things that I'm doing every day. I solve a marketing problem that nobody has ever faced before, that nobody has ever learned before. Even I'm working for companies where the owner is a PhD in marketing, and he launched his startup. But he understands that there is a, a, a limit level of uh, knowledge. So you will need to have sooner or later a CDO or eventually elevate one of your staff to become the CDO of the organization. And if you are so passionate about digital, this is the ultimate goal. I was happy to see that because I'm training digital marketing for the last six years in Dubai and the Middle East. And at the last event, uh, three or four months ago in uh, YouTube, I, I met four of my ex-students that have been training two or three years ago, now they became the CDO of the biggest organization that there are in town. That for me was a pleasant success. And especially one of them told me that he was thinking maybe to change, to move out from marketing because he's not recognized, his job has become monotonous. And then he told me, let's see after digital what's happened. He got crazy passionate into it, and then he started climbing the ladder. Then became the CDO of Starcom. So, Somebody that was thinking to leave marketing from a normal marketing position, two, three years later, is the CDO of the biggest advertising agency in the planet. So there is a big gap. There is a big need. Still, company, they cannot find one good one. But that's the way. For the employees that are passionate enough about digital, this is the way. Otherwise, what's happened? They will open their own little startup, and they're going to eat you. Who want to succeed in digital? I like it more than pizza. Now, I'll give you the biggest tip that anyone can possibly give you. That if you are describing your company as the best, the market leader, the number one, top, awesome, amazing, innovative, every company is the best, the top, the number one, right? So what you need to do? You need to get digital and be Remarkable. That's the word. Remarkable. Who has been the most remarkable person? Our beloved Steve Jobs. I want to include also your close friend Elon Musk. Another massive, massive, massive trend is going to be personal branding. Who of you have heard about the concept of personal branding? Who has not heard, have no idea whatsoever what is personal branding? Okay, good. Like, we build brands. We push our brands. We make sure that the brand is perceived bigger and bigger and bigger. But what about ourselves? 
we are the first little company that's every morning you wake up, take breakfast, go to work, make money, come home, and feed your family. We are our own little company within a bigger organization. So we are a little brand. Who needs personal branding? Who really benefit from it? Do you may think, yeah, but that's nothing to do. I don't understand. I don't think that is good to, to be famous. Nobody's going to ask you to become a Britney Spears or Jennifer Lopez. Be clear. But within your niche, within your organization, within your field, then you need to become the reference point. Not the celebrity. The celebrity, you can do very bad things and become a celebrity. We all know that. We all have Kim Kardashian as the best example in the planet. But when you are the reference point, when people say, when it's about cars, you need to ask this guy. He's so knowledgeable, he's the best knowledgeable person I've ever met in my life. When it's about football, you ask your friend that knows everything about football, right? And it was said when, uh, when he mentioned about the World Cup, because Italy, obviously, meh, 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 meh. <laughs> but when it's about movie, you have that friend of yours that knows everything about movie. And you call him, say, oh, what's the best movie right now? And he tell you amazing, uh, the, the best uh, to watch now. What's happened when you go to an Apple store? Because as much as we love digital, when you go to the Apple store, every employee is so knowledgeable, so keen, so passionate, he can spend with you one day. Talking about Apple, 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 Apple. They give you free training now in Apple. They teach you how to use the phone, how to use the scheduling, how to use the phone for business, how to use the Mac, uh, how to do this, how to do that. Free, free, free training delivered by top-notch, passionate employees. Mall of the Emirates uh, Apple Store has 180 employees. Little, little store, 180. And are ready to kill for so passionate they are about Apple. They know inside out everything. They're not some, somebody that you need to pay and ask, please, sell the phones. Hello, sir. What phone would you like? Oh, it's okay. It's okay. I don't like this job, and I don't like my boss either. It happens to me sometime in some company. So you go to an Apple store. Hey, how can I help you? Have you seen the latest iPhone X? You know that he can do this and this and this and this and this? One hour later, you are still there with the guy eating your brain because of the latest things that you can do. And you come out like, oh, I need to buy the new iPhone X, even if it costs 50% uh, uh, more than the previous one. That's how everything works with personal branding. So who needs it? Entrepreneurs, doctors, lawyers, because they are their own company. But not only, senior managers, because sooner or later, you're going to be standing in public, convincing an audience, convincing the ministry, convincing the travel and tourism authority, entity, whatever, that your product is not good. It's unbelievably amazing. Right? This is what our friend Steve Jobs realized, that you cannot sell device. You need to make the device become human. You cannot sell a logo of Apple. So he put himself first. It was a challenge. Because when you humanize your brand, there are a lot of challenges implicated. But when you become a personal brand, then you sell yourself first. And people buy people first. People, they don't buy a brand. Even Ferrari, you buy the Ferrari, Mr. Ferrari himself, that created the first Ferrari more than 100 years ago. And he was racing and winning competitions. You buy that. You still buy the person. And when we talk about uh, fashion, in fashion industry, the fashion brands are only humans. You buy Armani, you buy Giorgio Armani himself cutting the, 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 the suits and stuff. Armani now has a nice and healthy living, doesn't need to cut anymore, okay. Interact a little bit in the company, but you still buy his craftsmanship, his experience and stuff like this. Even the, any, many Italian luxury so far, they do the same. It, the kitchens, they do the same. So it's all working around people. You need to sell a brand, but people buy people. We all know that when His Highness got the Mercedes G55 AMG, every human being that can afford, they need to buy G55 AMG. And then maybe they buy Ferrari Lamborghini, and then maybe they buy something else. But people buy people. 
Who else may need personal branding? Trainer, HR, entrepreneur. Because at the end of the day, everyone sells himself first. And when people buy you, they will buy whatever products you want to sell them. That's the bottom line of personal branding. Please take this opportunity. Let's move forward. Things that are happening are quite destructive. Unless we start taking the first steps in terms of change, we're going to be left behind. We're going to be the Spanish team of 2010, which we don't want to. Thank you very much for attending.